Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So just take a moment, get yourselves a little bit situated. Um, if you haven't joined a webinar before, the chat is over there on the right hand side. You can minimize it if you want as well. That is going to make your screen a little bit bigger. So if we have not met before, my name is Marie Baldwin and I am the trainer here at Jackrabbit. And today I am joined by my two very loyal sidekicks, Rebecca and Bethany. They are both in Jackrabbit support. So you may have either talked to them on the phone when you had a checkup call or maybe even had a chat with them. Uh, so if you want to just get kind of accustomed to the chat, you can just drop in there where you guys are located. Um, I'm actually in Newfoundland and Labrador, Canada, and uh, Rebecca's also Canadian. She is in Calgary, Alberta, and oh, we've got some people from Regina there. And let's see, we've got Deborah from Airdrie. Uh, Deborah, you might not know this, but I'm actually going to Calgary tonight. Uh, if you want to join us for brunch on Friday, uh, just shoot me an email later on. And uh, I can give you all the details on that. And then as well, we have Bethany. She is located in North Carolina. So hi, guys. Thank you so much for helping out. I'm just having a quick look at the chat, see where everybody else is from. Awesome, guys. OK. So before we get started, just to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items, if you have not been on a live webinar with us before, the recording will be emailed out to you. It does take a little time for it to process, but you will get an email follow-up with uh, an online recording. Again, like I just said, you can use that chat to ask questions. I'll try to have a look at the chat from time to time. If anything big is popping up, Rebecca or Bethany, uh, feel free to unmute and just let me know. Oh, Peggy is in Edmonton, Alberta. It is cold today i bet it is i'm actually going to edmonton on saturday uh let's see you can minimize the chat if you have any issues at all uh one thing that really helps is if you close out all of your other windows and then the other thing that you can do is on your keyboard you can always click f5 to refresh <clears throat> excuse me and then that should help you out there so next, we're just going to go over a couple of quick ways that you can connect with all of us here at Jackrabbit. Uh, we are actually really, really accessible for uh, everybody for whatever you might need. So first off, we have access to Jackrabbit support, which you can always get to us in the top right hand corner of your um, executive dashboard. And then also up there in that right hand corner, we have our resource center. So our resource center lists all of our latest enhancements, uh, information about upcoming trainings and uh, where I will be training different parts of the country. And then as well, you have access on jackrabbitclass.com forward slash support forward slash webinars. We have an actual webinars page that you can actually sign up for notifications. So sometimes I do webinars that are not actually live and I will update them. So for example, I've got a new webinar that is getting uploaded tomorrow, um, all about the power of your weekly calendar. And it actually highlights how you can use our new substitutes feature. And next we have our Jackrabbit training system. So this is a self-paced, self-guided training system. If you are an owner or a manager and you have new staff, that are coming on board. This is really, really great for them. It takes them through and then it lets you know that they have completed it and they can actually even get a certificate sent to them when that is done. And then last but not least is our Facebook users group. So Jackrabbit's Facebook users group, it is a closed group. Uh, we do monitor everything that gets in there. And uh, it's a really, really great resource, not just to reach out and ask questions about how to use Jackrabbit, but I've seen people ask questions like, what do you put in your policies? Um, how do you char charge your families? How is your website set up? So there's tons of resources in that group. And as well in the Facebook group, there is a search. So if there's a topic that you want to probably see if somebody else had asked that question and gotten great answers to, you can go ahead and use the search. And next we have our agenda. So like I said, this is all about uh, the Jackrabbit Smart Grid. So we're going to be going over today your default view 
and customization. And that is one of the main, main features with the grids is that you can absolutely customize it to what you want. You can make your customizations visible to everybody on your team. You can have it just for you. Uh, we're gonna go over just talking quickly about your favorites, all of the visuals that are on the family, students, and classes pages. And uh, we're gonna talk about your column sort and how you can search. And then we're gonna go over grouping and then I'm gonna go over on each of the grids, all of the different mass actions that you can take. So give me just one moment and I am going to start sharing my screen. Just one sec, everyone. Okay, so I am just starting right off from my executive dashboard. The very first uh, grid that we're going to look at, we're just going to have a look first, just go from left to right, and we will start with our all families. So under families, all families. So the very first thing I want to bring your attention to is this breadcrumb bar right here. So you will notice that mine automatically pulls in my family status of active. And that is because that is how I have my default view set up. So then just moving straight on over here. I'm just going to talk about the filters in a moment. So right here in this little icon. So you can see this is my default view right here. If I want it to, let's just say, for example, come in here and add a new column. Let's just say I want to add the zip code column. And then if I come back up here, I can, excuse me, I can just click save and it's actually going to overwrite my existing default view. So I'm just going to click on that for you. Just a second. And then next, we're just going to pop back over here to your filters. So all of your filters, the drawers are automatically closed up. That's what all of these here are called. But if you're ever not totally sure of what it is that you need to search for, you can either open up a drawer and see all of them. You can expand all of them if you want to have a look through. But then as well, you can actually type in this. So if I just type in FI here, so for financial details, if I want to come right to membership type, and then it automatically brings me right down to there. Same thing if I wanted to search on a billing method, I could search for anybody with no method, and then email, mail, or both. And then next right here, we have all of my favorites. So if I click on this drop down, so you can see I have all of these favorites here. So if I want to click on active, including billing, I can just load that. And now all of that is there for you. And then next right here, this little last icon, this lets you hide your visuals if you do not want to use them. I highly recommend keeping the visuals open. It lets you get access to things so, so quickly. And I am just going to check one thing here. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Sorry about that. So like I had just said earlier, for my default view, it automatically pulls in my family status of active. If I wanted to have a look at, let's just say, for example, all of my inactive families, I can come right here. I can see that I have 37 inactive. These are all clickable. And then you can see, so right now I have all of my inactive families showing. So I'm just going to take that off. And this one here, if you have multiple locations, you can click if you only want to work with just one certain location. And then next we have our accounts receivable. So if I click on this 20, it is going to show me everybody that has a balance that is actually greater than zero. And so if I wanted to quickly email all of those people, I could use my send message icon 
and it will send a message to every single person. So I'm just going to uncheck that one. And then next to that one, we have your families with unpaid fees, and it actually lists out for you the top five people that have balances right now. Again, if you wanted to email them, you could. And then right here, we have our policy status. So this is a great one as well. So when you click on it, these are all the families that have not agreed to my policies. And again, if I wanted to, I could easily send all of them a message. Oopsies. And then next we have your e-payment status. So I have 16 families right now with no e-payment method. And then on the blue, I have got 42 families that only has a credit card on file. So next, so we just one second. One other thing that I wanted to show you is I'm just gonna come back in here and get my default up. So next we're gonna talk about this little row of icons right here. So you can see the first one is adjust columns. So if I wanted to squeeze in my grid, so I have a lot of columns showing, they come all the ways over here. If I click on squeeze grid, now all of my columns, you can see some of these are a little bit cut off and that is so that all of your columns can show in. If you want to have all of your columns shown like this every time you come in, all you need to do, again, is just come up here, make this my default view. If I click Save and Overwrite, now every time that I come back onto my All Families grid, everything is going to be squeezed in for you. And then next we have your Send a Message icon. So with the Jackrabbit grids, if you do not select one or even three or four particular families to send a message, it is going to send a message to everybody that you have filtered on. So right now I have filtered on family status of active. So it will send a message to every single family. So I'm just gonna show you really quickly how good that looks. So we have email. If you have Jackrabbit Plus, you can send a push notification. And then as well, if you are set up for text messages, you can uh, send a text message. So I'm just gonna click on email. So first, you're just gonna define your audience. So I'm just gonna say, I only wanna send it, let's just say to the billing contact. I'm not gonna send it to my instructors and I'm not gonna send it to all of my additional staff. Do I want to include people that were opted out? Yes or no. And then who would I like to be copied? So let's just say I wanna copy Bethany in on this. And then who do I want my replies to go to? So your replies automatically default to the email address of the user that is logged in. But if you want your email replies, let's just say, for example, to go to Laura, I could absolutely change that. And then next, we come up to your composer. And if you want, don't forget, we have all of these templates right here for you. And you can customize these, you can edit them. And then as well, you can attach a file, insert an image, and then we can preview the list. So I'm just going to, let's just do this birthday one here. And then I'm gonna click on preview. And so you can see, this is all of my active families that have on that filter billing contacts right there. I can send the message now. I can also send the message later. Keep in mind when you do send a message later, it is this list. So if you had new people come in or people leave, you would have to come in and redo your message. So I'm just gonna close out of this really quickly. And then next we have a refresh. So let's just say, for example, I came in here and I want it to show a whole bunch more columns number of students, number of students currently enrolled. I can do that. And then I'm gonna squeeze my grid again. So you can see all of these are here, but if I don't want these columns back again, I just need to refresh my grid. There, so I'm just gonna remove those out. I'll try to keep my grid as clean as I can. And then next right here, we have add a new family. 
So keep in mind, uh, this pop-up will be changing a little bit. It's going to look a lot sleeker in uh, the coming month or so. So, but for right now, you can either just go in and add your family or you can use your quick registration form. So keep in mind, one thing is that because you are adding this family using your quick registration form, there is no uh, inf or option here for them to agree to their or your uh, policies. So if you happen to say have an iPad or you're gonna let somebody you know, register at your location, you would want to actually open up your full uh, registration form versus using your quick registration so that you can get all of those policies in there. I'm just going to check on the chat here. Yes, Karen, different users can have their own default screen. So I'll just show you right here. So when I save something as a favorite, it automatically defaults to share it with your team or you cannot. And then when you come in, this is your default view. So it's the default view for the user that is logged in. So just one second. So next, I wanna show you all of the mass actions that you can take on your family's grid. So mass actions is an action that you are going to perform in mass to your filtered group. So right now, again, I have, I'm on just all of my active families. If I wanted to make a mass action to all families, I could do it right there. And then I just click on these dots. So I can easily update e-payment schedules. I can manage family discounts. I can manage family fixed fees. I can manage my family's membership types. I have the ability to clear out any family user-defined fields. I'm always able to print my grid. And then as well, you're able to export to Excel. So when you export this grid right now to Excel, it will only just be these columns that are showing. So I'm just going to Let's just see here. Quick. So right now, I want to pull up all of my families that have a fixed fee. So I'm going to say yes, and then apply. So you can see I've got these families that do have a fixed fee. If I come here and I click on family fixed fee, I have the option. I can edit both of these families or I can actually remove these families from having a fixed fee and then update it and then confirm it. And it is that simple. The grids can save you so, so, so much time. So I'm just gonna remove this filter. So next, I just wanna bring your attention to your row action. So on every grid, we have different row actions. So these are all actions that you could, if you were actually on a family's page, actions that you could perform. So I can actually just go into view my family or edit my family. I can also get to that by just clicking on the family last name right here. I'm able to post fees. I can as accept a payment or post a credit. And then as well, if I needed to, I could easily come in here and add a note. So just to note, if I click on a family, you will notice that these dots go. So if I wanted to make a mass action to just these three families, I could just click those families and then it's only these families that are gonna have that mass action. Same thing, if you have a random group of families that you want to email, they may not have anything really in common to sort of like pull them in. You could absolutely come over here, just pick individual families and then send them your message that way. So you will notice on my family right now, when I'm looking at my column headers right here, you will notice that it is sorted on my balance. If I want it to take that off, I can just click it twice and then I can actually sort by my family last name if I wanted to sort, take this sort off, I just click it again. So you can see ascending and descending and then off. So I'm just gonna take this one off. 
if I wanted to sort by current classes. We get this one a lot in support. People want to know how many families have you know, students in multiple classes or how many students have multiple classes. You can easily do that there. So you will notice all of my inactives are here and they all have no classes. If I wanted to pull up just my actives, so I could see it here. If I wanted to see what families had the most classes, I could just sort it the opposite way. And I can see that the Wilson family, they have three students with a total of eight classes currently. Let me just pop back to the chat. Okay. Okay, Rebecca, put that in. Uh, if you if you are looking for the Facebook group, just go on Facebook, type in Jackrabbit Software Users Group, and then uh, if you can, it just helps us a lot to put in your organization that you're with because we do go into the admin side of Jackrabbit to confirm that you are an existing client. Yes, so if a student has a fixed fee and you're using transactions post tuition, the fixed fee will override that tuition amount. But if you come to transactions, post transactions, if you wanted to post just a class transaction, let's just say a competition fee, that is not going to override it. The fixed fee just only overrides your tuition fee posting. Same thing, it's not going to affect any of your annual fees either. Is there a way to list the name of the family's current classes? Yes, Joshua, I will show you that in just one second. So we're going to move right on over to our all students. So again, you can see my default is to have all of my active students. And I do have this grid. It is already uh, squeezed in. So I, this is all of my columns that I have. Uh, so Joshua, just to answer your question, I actually got this on chat yesterday, I believe it was. So right here, each student, you can see their number of enrolls. If I click on this four, it does bring up all of the pertinent information. And then as well, I could get to their complete enrollment history from here if I wanted. But there is actually a column option to show current classes. So if I click on that, you can see it's dynamic, it brings it up. And then right now, so this is all of my current classes right here. So again, if I want it to, I'm gonna pull off this sort and then sort on my number of enrolled. So if I want to see who's enrolled in the most classes, it is actually Spencer and the next to Spencer is Mila. Okay, so your filter drawers all work the same on your family students and your classes grid. How do I add a permanent discount by percentage to a family and then apply it when they enroll? You can actually add a family discount. I'll pop back uh, when we finish this and show you where you can do that. So again, your filter drawers, they all work exactly the same. If you're not sure what you can filter on, you can just come here, open them up. It's really good to have a look through this every once in a while just to kind of re get yourself re-familiar with everything that you can see. So you can see I can search on sizes and then right down at the bottom. So I'm going to talk about this in a moment. You can agree to your photo release or search on a skill level. Again, you can hide your visuals if you want it. <clears throat> so for your visuals for your all students grid, uh, we have your location and your status again. Next, we have your absences within the last 14 days. So anything that is blue, just think clickable. So if I wanted to see all of my active students that has, that has an absence in the last two weeks, so now all of these students are here. 
So let's just say, for example, I wanted to maybe click on Diane. Diane has had two absences. If I want to check them, it brings up her page. And if I needed to, I could go ahead and schedule her makeup. This one here, I really, really like. If you have somebody that has had a lot of absences recently and maybe you need it to email that family, you could easily come in here and identify anybody that has had a lot of absences recently. And the next same thing with the drops. I've had uh, one student have a drop within the last week. And I have seven students that are owed makeup. So again, I could have absences equal to yes, and then makeup's owed, and then I can see everybody there. I can actually take off this, and now you can see I actually have eight people who are owed makeups. And then again, you can see here your top five. So Spencer has three makeups that are outstanding. Marie. Bill has two. I'm not yes. seeing what you're talking about on the screen. You're not seeing. Okay, I need to refresh. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, guys, it, ha it happens to the best of us. So, Bethany is probably manning chat as well right now, too. So, that might be why she got a little bit uh, her screen. Again, if anything happens, just click refresh. Um, Okay. Uh, yes, thank you for answering that, Rebecca. I was just checking the chat really, really quickly there. And then next we have, again, your expand or squeeze, send a message. It works exactly the same way on your families, your students, and your classes. And again, we have your refresh. And then we have mass actions that you can take on a student. So on the student level, you can manage your student fix fees. You can clear out any user-defined answers. Uh, you can clear the vaccination status field. You are able to add a note. Again, you can print and you can export to Excel whatever it is that you have filtered out. So I'm just going to remove this filter right now. And then... The next thing I'm going to show you are all of your actions on your row that you can take for your student. So again, you can view your student, you can enroll your student, uh, you can email your student schedule, you can get their information sheet, check on their absences and attendance, and you can individually add a note or individually, individually clear a vaccination status. So one thing to note as well is that in some of the columns, you do have a search. So let's just say I wanted to look for everybody that had a grade level of six. I can type in six here, click enter, and then I have everybody that's in sixth grade. And if I wanted to email them, I could go ahead and email them. And then this little red X will just pull that right back out for you. And then Again, all of the different columns that you can show. So again, just like with your filter drawers, it's really good from time to time to just come in here and get yourself just reacquainted with all of the different columns that you can show. And then the next thing I am going to show you is we get this question a lot. Uh, people ask like, how can I email everybody that's in, a, in the recital? because I, you are not able currently to email from the recital module. So I could easily come up here, is student in recital? And note right here, it says, drag a column header, drop it here to group by that column. So I can drag it all the way over here. So now I can see all of my active students. And then these are my students that do not have anything in there. So if I wanted to come in, let's just say for these two, and I could click on them, and these ones don't have any, and then I could send a message to them just saying like, you know what, you didn't answer this question. Could you please go into your parent portal and update it? And then as well, or if I wanted to, I could come here and then email all of my students that are actually in my recital. 
And this is where this one comes up. So if I wanted to clear out everybody's answers right now for recital, I could come in here and I could clear out this field. And in that way, then if I'm starting a new year, or if I need to re-ask the question and have parents come back in and answer it in the portal, I could clear it out and then have everybody go back in. When they do go in and log into their portal, they will get a little um, alert if it is a required field. Yes, you are able to sort on multiple columns. So let's just say I want to sort on location. So that's my first one. And then I want to sort on, let's just say age. So you can see now this is sorted. This is my sort one and this is my sort two. If I wanted to then say sort on notes, that would be my third. You just need to double click it. And then it, that takes the sort off for you. One other thing I want to talk about is that I do have some of my columns locked. So I'm just going to show you right here so you can see how as i scroll over these first four columns they stay locked so to get to your locked you just click here set column position and then i could actually so right now my column is locked i can actually unlock this column and then now when i scroll you can see that column it does actually move Let's just pop right back up here. Okay, so the last grid that we have is your all classes grid. Uh, I'm just reading the chat. How do you, okay, so uh, Shan, that is a user defined field just in case anybody has the chat minimized. She asked about um, how can you cure, how uh, did I add the field is student in recital? That is a user defined field. You can add your user defined fields by coming over here under settings, general, and right here, user defined fields. So you can have up to five on a family and up to five on a student. And then on your uh, registration pages, you can actually decide whether or not um, it is required optional or if you want it hidden. So I'm just going to come back to my all classes grid. So you can see with the all classes grid, there are a lot more visuals that happen. So you can see I drag it all the ways over. And again, you can hide these if you want, but having these open can let you get to things so, so quickly. So again, we have your location and your status. Next for your classes, we have your session. So you can see that I have multiple sessions all set up right now. It does default sessions with active enrollments. So if I have a session that is, that say I'm preparing for next fall and I don't have anybody enrolled in it, it is not going to show here for me if I need it to get to it. I could under uh, reports use uh, classes search and bring it up that way. You're able to show your classes by your category one. So let's just say, for example, I wanted to send an email to all of my cheer classes. I can just click that category one of cheer and then shoot out that email to them. And then next we have, I'm just gonna take this one off. And the next, we have classes that have had absences the last 14 days. So if I click here, I can easily look at all of this class information. It does, again, show my top five. So I know that in the last two weeks, my group tumbling class has had four absences. Maybe that's a lot for me. Maybe it's not. But if you have a class that's got a lot of students that are continuously absent, that just kind of lets you know, like maybe you need to kind of have a look at something, just you know, see if there's anything going on with the instructor. Uh, we have one, I've, sorry, I have had one drop in the last 21 days, but that shows for somebody that has an absence. So if I take off that filter, you can see now I can see that I have had five actual drops in the last 21 days. Again, I can click on it and then I can see what classes have had people drop out. 
And again, you have your top five. And then next, I'm just gonna remove this one off. And the next, you can see I have 86 out of my 94 classes of all of my classes that have openings. Again, this the top five, I absolutely love it because it just lets me know like, okay, you know what? This Monday to Friday tumbling 7 p.m. class has 18 openings. So maybe I need to possibly promote that a little bit more. And then you have your classes with wait lists. So again, you can see which classes have the most wait lists. So this advanced chair, I've got four people on the wait list there, but just watch how quick and easy we can do something. So I'm gonna click on my classes with openings and then come back over here. And I wanna click on classes with wait lists. So I know now that these three classes, they may have been full at one point in time and somebody dropped out, but I've got four people on the, this wait list right here and I've got openings so I could easily come here and then get to my wait list and then decide if I want it to let's just go ahead and enroll Donald and we're just going to ignore that and then there I was going to post fees now and there so now Donald is in there so I'm going to come back here and then I'm just going to refresh my grid. And you can see my number has changed right there. So I'm going to remove these filters. And it's going to double check the chat again really quickly. Yes, Jessica, you can on the report for that. Uh, under the makeups and absences report, it's just that the grid automatically just defaults to show 14 days. Uh, that is all hard coded in as well. So the next thing I'm going to show you is again, we can adjust these columns to squeeze it in if I want it. Or if I need it to, I could expand it again. Same thing. I can send a message. I can send a message to everybody. So when you're sending a message from the class, it is emailing everybody that is currently enrolled in that class. Next, we have your filter calendar. So I am just going to open up my calendar really quickly here for you. Da, da, da. Just one second. Oopsies, I'm having a little trouble with my mouse. There, so now you can see my calendar because my does pop up in another window. So I had to stop my share and then go back in. So but you can see right here, if you look at my weekly calendar, I've got different categories of classes right here. They're all defined by my uh, category one colors. So just note right now, this ballet one class right here. So I'm just gonna close that out. And then get my window back up here. So if I wanted to look at just only my cheer classes, and if I come here and I want to get to my calendar, if I open up now my weekly calendar from my filter calendar, which I'm going to have to stop sharing again and reshare. There. So now you can see, so that ballet class there is gone. Those other uh, classes that were up here, they are gone. So when you are coming in from your all classes, whatever you have filtered on, that is what is going to show in your calendar. So let's just say, for example, I'm running dance classes, I'm running cheer classes, or I'm running ballet classes and jazz classes, and somebody comes into my location and they want to register for or look at the schedule for all of my ballet classes, I could filter on that. I'm just gonna stop that share. And then come back in again.
Okay, Ashley asks, can you uh, change the colors uh, based off your category two instead? No, you can't. You can only change your colors based off of your category ones. Okay, so I'm just gonna take off this filter. And then again, we have your refresh. If I wanted to add a class, you can just click here and then you see the little add a class modal does a pop up right here. So one thing that is different, if you're adding a class from here, there is nothing pre-filled in. Whereas if you add a class from your weekly calendar, uh, if you add it, if you click on a time slot, it's actually gonna fill in your start and your end time for you. So that kind of saves you a little bit if you're trying to figure out where to put classes in. And then next, let's have a quick look at your mass action. So remember, you can take mass actions on everybody. You can take mass actions on just a filtered group of people, or you can come in here, or sorry, group of classes. You can come in here and literally just pick and choose what classes you wanna make your mass action to. So in mass, you can add a resource. You can add a policy group. You can remove a policy group. You can mass drop. So that would mass drop every student that is in that class. Don't recommend you to do that right now unless something major happens. Uh, you can mass edit, which goes to the same as your classes, edit all classes. Uh, one thing, classes, edit all classes. If you have a lot of classes, make sure you click on show all. Uh, you can add a note, uh, you can print, and again, you can export to Excel. Your export, again, just like with families and students, it is going to export what you have filtered on. And then for your row actions on your class. So you can view your class. You can easily enroll a student. You can email them, just one class individually. You can enter absences. You can post class transactions. You can copy your class. Again, you can mass drop if you just needed to mass drop everybody from one class. Let's just say something happened with the instructor and you needed to terminate the class. You can add a note, add a resource, and you can also archive a class. Let's just see. The calendar shows, yeah, okay. Uh, Now the calendar shows your classes based on time, not alphabetical order, but you can sort your grid if you want it based on time, or you could sort your grid based on alphabetical order though. Okay, let me just double check something really quickly. We're almost through. And just check and see if there's any more questions here. Oopsies. How I did that? I am on the wrong window. There we go. So one other thing that I wanted to show you really, really quickly, and this is like one of the pluses about being on some of these webinars. If you needed to, I'm just gonna show you something really quickly. If you all want to come to my families, all families. So you can see right here, I have an option for primary phone number. I can take off this sort, remove it. And if I wanted to sort everybody that doesn't currently have a primary phone number listed, I could sort them here. I can come in here and I could check all of them. Or as well, instead of sorting, I could actually group them. And then my group now, I have everybody here that does not have a primary phone number. So you can easily email all of them. Uh, coming very, very soon, uh, Jackrabbit will be having a self check-in for students, for your families, and they will be required to have that primary phone number. So just a little like, if you wanna get some of the groundwork laid for that, you could go ahead and maybe Check, make sure everybody has a primary phone number. And if not, come in here, check them, and then send them all a mass email to go in and update that. Okay, I'm just having a quick look at the chat.
What type of class do you recommend archiving? So we normally recommend that you archive a class, uh, not just like on the last day, but once maybe you've got like all the fees posted and everything's kind of cleaned up for it, you can go in, you can uh, archive a class individually, or you can go to classes, archive classes. And then if you want it to, if I want it to come in here, let's say, for example, and archive my entire 2022 fall session, I could easily come in and do that. So I'm just going to come back out of there. Uh, so what self check in is so let's just say if you were a swim organization and you have 2000 students that are coming in and you need to know who is in your building, uh, they're going to come in, uh, they will literally put in their phone number, if they have multiple students, they're going to check in student one student two, and that way, then you will know everybody that is in. Uh, would you archive before the term was over most likely not kathy i mean there could be like a strange situation that we had two years ago where you might need to do that uh, let's just see here and don't forget if you archive a class you can go back in and restore it and looks about it i don't think i've missed anything else i'm just going to stop my share I'm just reading the chat. Um, I'm going to say this month, Adrian. You will hear more about that in the next uh, couple of weeks from our marketing team. So just keep an eye out for that. It is a really, really cool feature. Okay, so. Um, Oh, yes. Thank you, Bethany. I missed that question. Uh, Karen asked if you lose anything when you archive a class. Bethany got that one. Okay, that is it, everybody. So I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, uh, Aaron, so self-check-in, it's just, it's, they will have, let's just say, for example, if you're going to use a tablet, you will open up the, the self-check-in with Jackrabbit, and then it's going to let you know everybody that is at your location. So they're going to check in. Um, some people uh, have been using uh, the barcode system for checking people in. Uh, the one thing with the barcode system is that it is, you know, dependent on only if you're tracking attendance versus tracking absences. And if you track attendance, you cannot offer makeups. Uh, the self check-in doesn't matter. Everybody can check in it is really slick i had a look at it just last week and um just okay jennifer asked about seeing the classes yes so if you go to classes class reports classes search so your classes search automatically defaults to active, but I could actually click on all of my archive classes. And then when I hit submit, it just brings up all of my archive classes. So you can see I have a lot right now. Okay, and do do. Okay, so that is it, everybody. I don't see anything else coming in. Oh, wait, no, I just got Emily. Uh, with the new substitutes feature, can staff find their own subs in the staff portal? Or is this feature just for uh, admin to assign? So that is actually, I believe it's gonna pop out in the next phase uh, of the substitute. So right now you can only see it from within Jackrabbit. But as well, uh, just so that you are aware, you can actually see substitutes on your weekly calendar as well. And you can also see your staff skills and your staff availability on your weekly calendar if you go on your daily view. 
And awesome. Okay, and that is it, everybody. So if you need to get in touch with us, again, like I said, you can always reach out just by clicking on that question mark in the top right-hand corner of your database. Um, you can always send an email to support at jackrabbittech.com as well. Uh, we have another monthly webinar happening again next month. So because you've already registered, uh, you will just automatically get an email reminder. And like I said, we will be sending you out a copy of the recording. So if you have others in your organization that might like to watch this one, people that you want to share it with, feel free by all means to go ahead and share that with them. Awesome, everybody. You are most welcome, everybody. Thank you all for dropping in and attending. And thanks for all of the great questions, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Bethany.